The series begins with a spatial quake devastating the center of Eurasia. Thirty years have passed since the spatial quake, and the ditzy Kotori Itsuka and her adopted older brother Shido live in Tengu City, Japan. For the opening ceremony, Kotori and Shido make a promise to meet at a diner later that day. As school ends for Shido, a spatial quake alarm sounds throughout the city for the citizens to enter shelter areas immediately. After being unable to contact his sister, Shido uses his GPS to confirm that she is still within the city according to their promise. He leaves the shelter to find her and in doing so, is outside when the spatial quake occurs and creates a giant crater, thus meeting a spirit armor girl in the center. After a battle between the spirit and the AST unit, those eradicate spirits, where Shido witness his popular classmate Origami Tabichi is a part of the AST, he meets the Ratatoskra organization on their airship, the Fraxinus, with Sirius Kotori the commander and learn about the spirits. He gets knowledge of his ability that can seal away spirits' powers by making them fall in love with him. Shido progresses to the next phase of his training, putting theory into practice with real individuals. Initially, his mentor Tami Okamine, aided by Rain Marasame and Kotori, develops an intense infatuation for him. Trying to evade her feelings, Shido crosses paths with Origami. While using her for training purposes, an unintended relationship begins to form. Suddenly, a spatial quake alarm rings out, predicting the arrival of the enigmatic princess spirit at Raisin High School. With the school partially demolished and students evacuated due to the quake, Shido ventures inside to confront the princess. Establishing a connection, he names her Toka. The AST arrives, attempting to eliminate Toka from afar through her protective barrier. However, Origami, seeing Toka with Shido, misinterprets the situation as a hostage scenario due to Shido now being her boyfriend. Engaging Toka in combat, Origami sustains injuries. The following day, Toka reappears before Shido amidst the wreckage, ready for their planned outing. Following the incident at Raisin High School, Shido and Toka are on their date being overseen and supported by the and his crew. Toka mistakenly assumes that each variety of food she is consuming at first is a date. Not accustomed to a crowd, when the couple enter the shopping area she assumes that humanity is launching an all-out attack on her. Origami observes them from the shadows while Shido and Toka go from a high-priced restaurant to south of the station where they enter an improvised shopping area. Toka is able to indulge in the foods present to her desire but notices that Shido does not seem to be having fun. They move on to an arcade that is dominated by crane games. In the course of playing for a prize that has caught Toka's eye, Toka inadvertently voices her bond with Shido. They make their way to a cliff edge where Toka finally notices what a date is and sees why the mecha people want to keep the world that is so kind, fun, and beautiful from getting destroyed. Meanwhile, Origami is given permission to kill her with a single blast, but Shido intercepts Origami's blast. With Shido killed, Toka furiously attacks a stunned Origami to avenge Shido. Before Toka can kill Origami, Shido is mysterious revived with his wounds completely healed and falls from the sky towards Toka. To prevent the city's destruction by a critical state, Toka kisses Shido while they glide down to the cliff edge as Toka's astral dress disappears. Her last request is that Shido take her on a date again admitting that she's not ready to show her naked side yet. Toka joins Shido's class, sparking an immediate rivalry with Origami. On a rainy day, Shido encounters Yoshino for the first time while passing through a shrine, unaware of her significance. Viewing her as just another girl, he continues on his way. Meanwhile, at school, Toka competes with Origami for Shido's attention by making cookies. Upon returning home, Shido discovers that Toka will be residing with him, her powers sealed by his actions. Kotori explains that this arrangement serves as part of his ongoing training to seal more spirits. A spatial quake alarm interrupts the school day, leading Shido to discover that Yoshino, also known as Hermit, is the cause. To keep Toka safe, Shido leaves her in a shelter while he heads out to meet Yoshino. Unexpectedly, Toka follows and witnesses an accidental kiss between Shido and Yoshino. A conflict arises when Toka takes Yoshino's puppet, refusing to return it, provoking Yoshino to attack before fleeing. Utilizing her angel Sadkiel, Yoshino manages to escape the approaching AST forces, while Origami eyes Yashinan, the puppet dropped by Toka during the confrontation, after Shido defended her from an attack. Toka is avoiding Shido due to her feelings about what happened between him and Yoshino. She talks with Rain and receives advice and clarity about what occurred. During this time, Shido helps Yoshino look for her puppet, Yashinan. Yoshino gets hungry while searching so the two go to Shido's house to eat. It's revealed that Yashinan is Yoshino's friend because he is essentially a hero that is everything Yoshino wants to be. As Shido is getting close to Yoshino, Toka barges is spouting an apology but misinterprets the situation. Yoshino disappears away, Toka barges out again, but Shido learns from Kotori that Yashinan is at Origami's place. Origami forcibly makes progress between them when Shido comes over, but as the conversation turns to spirits, she gets notice of a mission. Yoshino is being targeted by the AST, but Shido plans to save her with Toka's help. As Toka acts as a decoy, Shido makes it through Yoshino's barrier with Yashinan to fulfill his promise. With her trust in him established, Shido seals Yoshino's power.
powers. In the last few scenes, it is revealed that the housing for the spirits has been completed so that Toka and Yoshino may move in. Toka and Yoshino decides to visit Hot Spring. So Shido makes the arrangement for them to go to Tengu Gokoraku Hot Springs. Perverted Kyohei Kanazuki persuades Kotori to go too, but has been exposed that he has ulterior motives. His punishment is to dig a hole and refill it for the next week. Meanwhile, Ryoko Kizukabe of the AST is informed that the DEM Corporation is going to send reinforcements. A hot-headed Ryoko also finds out from her member that due to the increase in the spirit's alert level the group's vacation trip is cancelled. Instead, the AST member will take Ryoko to the hot spring that Shido's going to. Origami, uninterested at first, receives a phone call from Shido where she overhears that he'll be going to the hot spring with Toka, reluctantly decides to go as well. While riding in the car, Yoshino is given affectionate attention by Shido which frustrates Toka causing Rina's car and road to be wrecked forcing them to walk instead. This in turn disrupts the train the AST is riding underground. The AST arrive up the surface unknowingly going in the same direction as Shido's group on the way to the hot spring. Kotori orders the group to do everything to stop AST in their tracks, pushing a stressed out Ryoko to breaking point, ordering everyone to use full force, turning into an all-out war, using ridiculous and absurd objects in date town, from sticky substance to sleeping gas. A stray ordnance causes Yashinan to fly off after the explosion. Shido goes to find Yashinan in the midst of the firefight and is almost killed by Ratatoskr's destruct mode. Toka saves Shido from the attack while overseen by Origami and fellow AST members. Ryoko and her team reaches the hot springs but due to Yoshino's crying earlier, it has frozen a few members leading to another disappointment. Kyohei dug up a hot spring that Kotori and the group end up enjoying themselves in. Mana Takamiya is then shown arriving in Japan after the credits. Mana engages in a rigorous 10 versus 1 practice match against Origami's unit, unaware that she would inadvertently reveal herself as Shido's biological sister during the AST's briefing on their previous battle with Hermit. Meanwhile, Kurumi Tokasaki, identified as a spirit, enrolls in Shido's class. While touring the school with Shido, both Origami and Toka follow, leading to a series of attempts by Shido to engage Kurumi, who reciprocates by trying to get closer to him. Codenamed Nightmare, Kurumi is notorious as the most lethal spirit. After school hours, Kurumi ends the lives of three delinquents, catching the attention of Mana, who confronts her. Later, Mana encounters Shido, leading him to bring her to his house. As Mana reveals aspects of her past, a heated exchange erupts between her and Kotori, leaving everyone with more unanswered questions than solutions. The following school day, Shido discovers that Kurumi was supposedly eliminated during her clash with Mana, yet she mysteriously appears at school. Origami takes the opportunity to question Kurumi in seclusion, uncovering Kurumi's pursuit of Shido due to his extended lifespan, revealing deeper motivations behind her actions. Shido extends an invitation to Kurumi but finds himself unwittingly part of a polygamous date when both Toka and Origami vie for his attention. Unable to refuse any of them without causing heartache for Toka, suspicion from Origami, or jeopardizing his plans to seal Kurumi, Shido faces a challenging situation. As their dates coincide and venues lie in close proximity, Ratatosk raids Shido by teleporting him between the girls' locations while monitoring their emotional states. Once Shido leaves Kurumi's company, she encounters boys harassing a stray cat and persuades them to let her join in their activities. Ratatosk loses track of Kurumi's whereabouts as Origami and Toka cross paths. Both declare their search for Shido, and Origami, worried there might be another person involved, hurries away. Shido returns in search of Kurumi but stumbles upon a distressing scene bloodshed in Kurumi confronting an aggressor. As Kurumi ensnares Shido, poised in a precarious situation, Mana intervenes, donning her CR unit to confront the unfolding turmoil. Mana kills Kurumi and explains everything to Shido. After he is forced away, he avoids Origami and Toka after running into them because of seeing the death Kurumi caused. Toka finds out the reason for Shido's behavior and continues her date with him to try to cheer him up. After gaining some insight to Kurumi, the next day Shido declares to Kurumi that he'll save her. Kurumi goes to the school rooftop while encasing the school in her field to dissuade Shido from trying to save her. Mana is confronting Kotori about Ratatoskr and attempting to use it as leverage against Kotori so she'll release Shido from the potential danger he's in, while Kurumi is threatening the school and the town. Origami and Toka are engaging in battles with other copies of Kurumi. Shido convinces Kurumi only for her to be killed by another Kurumi, since she can twist time using. As Toka and Origami show up, it's revealed that the hands in Kurumi's shadow are actually the hands of past versions of herself. Kurumi takes everyone hostage and attempts to blow a spatial quake only for it to be blown away. Kotori appears in her astral dress as the Afrit flame spirit explaining the spatial quake cancellation and fights Kurumi. After a short conversation, Kurumi used one of her skills to make Kotori stay still, create copies of herself, and shoot Kotori a few times. Kotori fell over after Kurumi's last shot but Kotori's healing skill enables her to not die. Then, the shocked Kurumi sent her copies to kill Shai 
Kaido, but he was pushed away by Kotori, and the copies were killed. In the heat of the fight, Kurumi inhibits Kotori, but it only worked for a while. Kotori used her weapon to shoot Kurumi after the frightened Kurumi summoned her copies to shield her. Shido tried to reason with Kotori to not kill Kurumi, but she ignored him, making Shido realize that Kotori is no longer herself. Immediately, he went to stand in front of Kurumi to shield her. After the shot launched, Kotori suddenly regained conscious and deflected the shot. Shido woke up on Fraxinus after dreaming of an event that happened five years ago. Being calmed down by rain, he went to see Kotori regarding on her condition. He left in despair to meet Nana and Origami in the hospital. Unable to meet Nana, Shido instead met Origami, who tried to get him closer to herself. Before Shido exited Origami's room in the late evening, she told him of her intent to kill the flame spirit to avenge her parents' death five years ago, and that's the reason she joined AST. Shido finds himself pondering the complexities surrounding surrounding Kotori's involvement in the incident from five years ago, considering the conflicting accounts from both Kotori and Origami regarding the residential fire. With the consensus among Raditoskra's headquarters personnel that Ocean Park is the ideal date location, Shido undergoes training orchestrated by Rain, involving Toka and Yoshino, to shop for swimsuits. During the shopping trip, Origami playfully teases Toka, suggesting her swimsuit is a new anti-spirit equipment piece. She also presses Toka about Efreet in an overly polite manner, attempting to extract information. Frustrated by Toka's lack of useful information, Origami urges Shido to assess her selection of swimsuits. Toka and Origami turn it into a contest, vying for Shido's attention. Ultimately, Yoshino emerges as the victor. Meanwhile, while reviewing a video of the fire incident, Shido identifies ordinary video noise as a spirit, triggering a series of flashbacks that overwhelm him, leading to a blackout. The following day, Toka and Yoshino join Shido in an attempt to assist Kotori, allowing her to relax. Witnessing Kotori resorting to medication to cope with her deteriorating mental state, Shido's determination intensifies, prompting him to take Kotori away in private. At the AST base, Origami encounters the DW029 Annihilator gear, codenamed White Licorice, provided by DM Industries for Mana's use. While conversing with Ryoko, Origami learns indirectly that footage of the clash between Kotori and Kurumi exists. In the final scene, Origami fixates on a frame from the footage, leading her to realize the true identity of Afrit as Kotori. A frightened Kotori is with Shido at the amusement park riding various roller coasters and attractions on their date. Without communications, Raditoskr can only monitor with Kyohei making masochistic comments to the opportunity Shido should have taken. While separated, Yoshino tells Toka what she overheard about Kotori being a spirit and how Shido is trying to seal her powers. Origami steals the white licorice and suddenly attacks Kotori as she is talking to Shido. Kotori changes into her spirit form to fight back, and Origami enters into a rampage, going into a full offensive. Before Kotori strikes a finishing blow, Origami accused her of how she killed her parents, astonishing Kotori long enough for Origami to trap her. Shido intervenes, delaying Origami, but as she is about to fire, Toka and Yoshino arrive. Toka strives to stop Origami. Origami, but as her ordnance is exploding ever closer to Shido and Kotori, the latter two kiss effectively sealing Ifrit. Simultaneously, Shido and Kotori remember exactly what happened five years ago. Shido pleads with Origami as she reaches the operational limit of white licorice and collapses from exhaustion. Kurumi is seen on a rooftop only commenting, this is not enough. Back on Fraxinus, Rain reveals that the real date wasn't necessary as Kotori's affection levels had not wavered since Shido first woke. Kotori returns to fill out reports asking if what Shido said was true. Kotori gets uncharacteristically embarrassed as he confirms his love of her, but Shido finishes saying simply as his sister he receives swift punishment. During the credits, it is shown that white licorice has been returned to the AST while Origami is recovering in hospital under guard. As Shido and Toka about to kiss they're interrupted by Raditoskr and finally Yashinan along with Yoshino simply say to be continued. Shido is awoken by the troubles of both Toka and Yoshino and manages to resolve the conflict. Meanwhile, Origami is suspended for two months from the AST. While eating breakfast, Shido receives a text from Origami, and they discuss the events that happened a month ago. Toka, while cleaning Shido's room, discovers a suitcase for their school trip that resembles one she'd seen in a dramatic film on the television. Toka grows worried, and rushes to find Shido, who is with Origami. Shido tries to make it up to Toka by getting her some kanako bread on the way home, but all the kanako bread is gone in all the bread stores. Kotori's assistant bought it all for the crew, alarming Kotori to hand some to Shido and Toka that would have nearly ruined the date. After making dinner, he notices that the lock of his suitcase is broken, so he goes out to meet up with Origami once more. Toka again recalls the scheme of the drama film, this time catching Shido and Origami together, 
and imagines that Shida was abandoning her for origami. Toka gets jealous, awakening some of her powers, and runs off while carrying Shido's suitcase. Toka's unsealed powers begin to create a spatial quake, and Shido rushes to find her. He later finds Toka in their special place, and Toka tries to prevent him from leaving with origami. Shido explains that it is all a misunderstanding, but Toka cannot control her powers and hits Shido with shockwaves. Shido is unharmed and manages to seal Toka's powers again. Meanwhile, Isaac Westcott and Ellen Mathers of DEM Industries, an organization with an interest in spirits, are scheming a plan for Toka. Kurumi plots to kill the first spirit. After a very awkward moment in Shido's class, where Toka tries switching genders in an effort to bunk with Shido, the class goes on a field trip to a Ruby Island. Throughout the entire trip, Origami and Toka inadvertently annoy Shido in an effort to win his affections. Meanwhile, DM Industries and Ellen Mathers, as a photographer, begin stalking Toka on the island. But Ellen has to deal with AI, Mai, and me, who has a sudden interest in her, as a humorous distraction. Sometime later, Shido and Toka ran out when a massive hurricane appears out of nowhere. Three trash cans strike Toka, knocking her out, while two spirits viciously battle overhead. When Shido tries to intervene, the berserk spirits Yuzuru and Kagaya decide their next battle in their long rivalry will be over winning Shido's heart, much to Shido's dismay. When the two girls return with Shido and an unconscious Toka to his class, Origami seemingly becomes enraged over her new competition. As Tami tries to arrange for the girls to become students in the class, Kagaya and Yuzuru explain that they were once a single spirit named Yamai and that their contests are in an effort to determine whose personality will remain when the two fuse into Yamai once more. Later that day, an incident occurs when the twins make an effort to seduce Shido by switching signs. Things get worse when Toka shows up along with the rest of the class. Worse of all, Shido is knocked outside the spa into very cold water. The twin spirits, still trying to seduce Shido, start cuddling up to him in bed. The situation worsens when one of his teachers walks in on the ordeal. Later, Shido plans to seal the Yamai twins' powers without letting one of them win, all in an effort to avoid both the unpredictability of the loser and what would happen to the loser's personality. During their contest, they have Shido apply sunscreen to their backs and become aroused by the process. Later, the Yamai sisters team up with Shido to take on Toka and Origami in a volleyball game, with the former winning the match. Each twin then privately pulls Shido aside, both telling him that the other sister should be the one who gets to remain. Later in the afternoon, Origami is ambushed by a strange mech-like being. Meanwhile, Shido talks with Toka about the twins' selfless decision to let the other one live, and both overhear the conversation. This leads to the Yamai twins getting into a heated argument, and both summon their astral dress. The woman stalking Toka and Shido, Ellen, finally reveals her true colors and orders a pack of mechs, called Bandersnatch units, to capture Toka. During the clash, Toka is incapacitated and captured, leading Shido to call upon her sword. By doing so, he manages to fend off the Bandersnatch and rescue Toka. Meanwhile, Kanazuki and his crew aboard the Fraxinus gets attacked by an enemy airship. Kanazuki launches a counterattack after deflecting several shots, leading to a full-scale dogfight between the two ships. Back at Shido's battle, Ellen falls down into a pit trap oddly enough dug by AI, Mai, and me, allowing Shido and Toka to escape. Running to Kagaya and Yuzuru, he summons Toka's power to intervene in the duel and convinces both the girls to forget about becoming Yamai and instead focus on enjoying their lives together. Noticing the airship that attacked the Fraxinus, the twins combine their powers and eviscerate the enemy ship with one massive blast. After the incident, Shido successfully seals the Yamai twins' powers, stripping them of their clothes just as Toka arrives. Meanwhile, Kotori learns from a strange man that Shido has manifested a spirit's power and she might have to kill Shido if the situation worsens. The suspension placed on Origami is finally lifted, and Ryoko receives several complaints before Jessica Bailey takes over as AST's new leader. Shido is selected as the organizer of the Tenno Festival. After a spatial quake alarm goes off, Shido gets to work before a new spirit, Diva, makes her first appearance. She's proving to be more of a challenge than the other spirits when the AST intervenes and tries to take her down. Shido finds himself in a troubling situation, and Diva manages to escape. It is later disclosed to Shido that Diva, aka Miku as AOI, is a full-blown idol that hates all men, meaning he has no chance of winning her over. This leads the Fraxinus crew to decide that Shido has to cross-dress as Shirori in order for him to get close to Miku, an idea two episodes ago in which Toka and Origami fight over before. Approaching her on stage as a girl, Shirori quickly befriends Miku before she invites him to tea. During their sit-down, Miku strongly requests Shirori to transfer to her school as a close contact using her manipulative voice powers. Shirori is unaffected, leading Miku to become suspicious of her. Failing to make a deal, Miku challenges Shirori to a competition at the festival wherein the loser has to offer herself to the winner. Meanwhile, Jessica Bailey from the DEM instructs AST to capture Toka and Shido. Mana finally awakens from her battle with Kurumi since season 1. For the upcoming competition, AI, Mai, and Mi prepare a band of their own to compete against Miku's. Elsewhere, Origami hears from Ryoko about 
out the usurp mission to capture Toka and Shido during the festival. Serving his head maid in a maid cafe with the Yamai twins employed, Shido, as Shirori again, is handing out posters when Miku arrives and asks her out on a date, despite Shiori's annoyance at Miku's arrogance. After the date, Shido discovers that the bandmates were manipulated by Miku's controlling voice power and will not perform for the concert. Praxinus cuts the stage's power to give Shido some time, but Miku gets the upper hand with her astral dress. The AST, led by Jessica, is targeting Tengu Square when Ryoko and Origami, piloting the white licorice, interfere. Kagaya and Yuzuru, being professionals, back up Toka and Shido to perform as best as they could, despite outside interference. The score results for the annual contest come in and, even though Miku wins best performance, the support of Raisin's Maid Cafe earns Shido enough to be declared the winner. Dejected and refusing to accept Shiori's friendship, Miku unleashes her angel, brainwashing everyone in the crowd, but Toka due to her earphones. Miku orders the girls to see Shirori. Running her fingers along Shiori's body, Miku discovers that the she is actually a guy, leading to her total shock and disgust. To make matters worse, Fraxinus and Kotori have also fallen under Miku's control and Ellen abducts Toka. Shido manages to escape, but is now a fugitive in the city. Amidst the chaos, Shido is surprised to see Kurumi and begs her for help. Meanwhile, Toka awakens in the DM facility, restrained. Shido and Kurumi arrive back at the Tengu Square to reason with Miku. Obnoxious she attempts to assault Shido, but Kurumi's power intercepts as she's resistible to Miku. As Kurumi distracts Kagaya, Yuzuru, and Yoshino, Kurumi traps Miku with Shido in a dark void to have a brief private conversation. Despite his honest ambitions, she still will not listen, so Shido makes his way to rescue Toka alone. Westcott torments Toka for his ambition to harness her power in despair. Fake spatial quake alarms are set off to evacuate all civilians. Kurumi holds off a pack of Bandersnatch units, as Nana appears and everyone aboard Fraxinus are back in their right minds. Meanwhile, Mika struggles about Shido's ambitions, whether he actually cares for others than himself. Infiltrating the DEM industries, Mana and Jessica engage, communications are jammed, Shido summons the Sandalfon to swipe the guards and enduring Kotori's healing ability. Shido almost got caught until Miku makes an entry as she commands the spirits to join the battlefield. Origami in a convention suit partners with Mana. While Shido and Miku argue, he reveals that Kurumi learned how Miku acquire her spirit power from Phantom, like Kotori, and she finally tells him that she used to be a splendid singer, but one day she rejected a TV producer's career offer, which leads to her disgrace with bad rumors spreading around with no help from her anyone. She tried to reconnect with her fans, but suffers psychogenic aphonia, resulting in losing her voice. This tension caused Miku to condemn humanity. Shido vows to keep his promise. Origami, Ratatoskr, terrorizes the territory to subdue Ellen when she's called to where Westcott was. Westcott makes his appearance when Shido and Miku find Toka. Shido is stabbed by Ellen with Toka losing control over his death. Toka is turned into an inverse negative form with her counterpart Swordcliffe and has no memory. Mana and Jessica reach the concluded battle. Jessica, dying in Mana's arms, tells how she always felt jealous and wanted to become strong for the DM. Mana made her decision to dishonor Westcott. Westcott decides to retreat, although he briefly calls Shido Takamiya. Toka brutally attacks, then Miku becomes vulnerable. Yoshino, Yashinan, Kagaya, and Yuzuru regain their sanity. Shido took the hit to protect Miku. Toka swings the Sword of Demise on Shido, but Yoshino, Yashinan, Kagaya, and Yuzuru help Shido from being close to death. Shido flies towards her reminding her of him, dropping the sandal fun. He seals her power once more with a kiss restoring her back to normal. Kurumi continue her search for the captive spirit. The next day, Miku who is happy, she purposely kisses Shido sealing her power after talking to her friends. Miku invites everyone to listen to her latest concert then announces to her darling, stunning the crowd and questioning Shido what darling means by Toka, Yoshino, Yashinan, Kagaya, and Yuzuru. Shido's future with girls is far from over. After having a hot pot party with the spirits, Shido and the crew of the Fraxinus depart to meet a new spirit who appeared. Introducing herself as Natsumi, aka which appears to be friendly to Shido at first until the AST attacks, she suddenly changes her behavior and without further explanation, declares that she will destroy Shido's life before making her leave. Back at school, Shido is surprised when his classmates and teacher accuse him of committing multiple offenses against them until he learns that the true culprit is Natsumi who disguised as him to destroy his reputation. But before Natsumi attacks Shido, Toka and Origami intervene and easily distinguish the true Shido from the false, forcing her to retreat. Some days later, Kotori approaches Shido with a letter from Natsumi containing pictures of 12 people close to him. According to the letter, Natsumi disguised herself as one of them and is challenging Shido to identify the imposter before all of them are disappeared. To find out who among his friends was replaced by Natsumi, Shido starts having dates with each of them. After meeting Toka, Yoshino, Hiroto, and Yuzuru, Shido decides that none of them could be Natsumi in disguise. However, at midnight, Natsumi uses her power to make Yuzuru disappear. Kagaya is distraught over her disappearance, but they lie to her that Yuzuru is away undergoing some test. Shido realizes he has to move fast in order to expose Natsumi before more disappearances occur. 
Shido goes on a date with Kotori, Hagaya, Miku, Ai, Mai, Mi, Tami and Origami, but is still unable to determine who Natsumi is disguising as. As a result, Natsumi causes more people to disappear, and only Kotori, Kagaya, Miku and Origami are left. The four remaining girls and Shido gather together to brainstorm on the identity of Natsumi. Natsumi appears and informs them that they only have three guesses left. During the brainstorming, they discuss the possibility that Natsumi might actually be one of those that have already disappeared. Origami also comments that Natsumi might not actually be a person literally. She stabs a knife through the photos to ensure that Natsumi is not hiding herself as a photo. The group guess wrongly twice and both Kagaya and Origami are sucked up by as a result. Miku loses hope and passes her hair ornament to Shido and comments that she doesn't want the hairpin to disappear together with her and wants something for Shido to remember her by. Triggered by Miku's comments on things disappearing together as well as the earlier discussion, Shido realizes that Yashin on the puppet was able to catch his handphone despite Yoshino not being able to see it. Thus Shido is able to guess that Natsumi is disguising herself as Yashinan, the puppet. Natsumi is shocked that she has lost and momentarily loses control. All the missing people reappears and Natsumi's true form of a little girl is revealed. Natsumi, angry that her true appearance has been seen again, transforms the spirits into child version of themselves, including Origami, who's involved as well. Shido has his hands full dealing with the spirits in child form, much to Natsumi's joy, as she is determined to make him suffer using magic to change the house and clothes. Meanwhile, the top executives of DM Industries are eager to get their revenge on Westcott and make plans to kill him no matter the cost. When Natsumi is attacked by a DM platoon led by Ellen, Shido, and the other spirits appear to rescue her. Weakened from the battle, Natsumi becomes unable to summon her angel and is confined by Kotori. Shido then confronts Natsumi and learns that she loathes him because he saw her true form as a child and that she believes he would never care about her because of that. Meanwhile, Origami is being hunted down by her former employees until she accepts working for DEM in exchange for information about a fire that happened five years ago. To cheer Natsumi up, Shido and the spirits take her to a full course of activities involving relaxing, buying clothes and makeup to show her that she can become pretty even as a child, but she flees as it becomes too much to deal with. To confirm what the others truly think of her, Natsumi disguises as Kotori and talks to them, but they turn against her, with Shido being clueless around Kotori. Meanwhile, the executives of DEM diverge a satellite to crash at the city in an attempt to kill Westcott. While the citizens evacuate to the shelter, Shido is determined to look for Natsumi in the city, who is missing. Kotori uses Fraxinus trump card, an immensely powerful cannon amplified by her spirit power, to destroy the satellite. However a second satellite appears and with Kotori too weak to use the cannon again, all hope seems lost. Shido tries to use his weapon, but it failed. Toka, Yoshino, Yuzuru and Kagaya came to help with Toka warning about the magic shield. At the last moment, Natsumi reveals herself and helps Shido and the other spirits destroy it. Having finally accepted Shido and the others as friends, Natsumi allows herself to be sealed by him. Suddenly, a third satellite bomb is dropped on the city, just to be later destroyed with ease by Origami wearing a DM combat suit, much to Shido's surprise. Shido learns that Origami left the school and looks for her at her apartment, where she captures him. While Kotori starts looking for him, Origami tells Shido that despite knowing that the spirits are not a threat once sealed, she must uphold the promise she made to wipe them all out in revenge for her parents' death. She then leaves to fight Toka and the others while the Fraxinus is intercepted by Ellen, piloting one of DM's ships. Despite the enemy ship being better equipped, Kotori refuses to surrender, and both ships fight, while a restrained Shido is calling out for help. As Origami fights against the other spirits, Natsumi and Yoshino rescue Shido. The Fraxinus continues to battle against Ellen and her ship while Toka struggles to protect the others from Origami's attacks until she manages to regain her lost power and fatally wounds her. Having lost the battle Origami accepts Phantom's offer of more power and transforms into a spirit herself equipped with, vowing to kill all spirits before committing suicide to ensure that no one else can be harmed by them anymore. When she resumes the fight against Toka, Shido appears to stands in her way, leading her to retreat. Later, as the other spirits are recuperating and Shido prepares to seal Toka again, Origami appears before Kurumi. Origami makes a deal with Kurumi to send Origami to the past to prevent her parents' death using her untested 12th bullet, yet bet. Once there, she confronts Phantom and attempts to kill her, just to later discover that it was one of her own attacks that killed her parents, and the spirit that was the source of her revenge was none other than herself, much to her despair. Returning to the present, fallen into her inverse form, an emotionless Origami attacks the entire city, including the hospital where Shido and the other spirits were recuperating. Despite the spirits and Fraxinus backup, Shido finds his voice can no longer reach inverse Origami as she is now dead to the world. Kurumi realizes that the current Origami can no longer be saved and thus sends Shido five years earlier hoping that he could change the past. Kurumi, sinking with Shido in the past, directs him to the spot where Kotori received her spirit powers from Phantom. Using Natsumi's magic to disguise as his ten-year-old self, Shido witnessed the events that took place when future Origami arrives and attacks. He realizes that Origami's parents were unintentionally intentionally killed by future Origami herself, thus causing her to go 
Windburst. Shido saves and comforts past Origami. He asks past Origami to carry all her emotions to him as the only emotion she will now carry is anger and vows to avenge her parents. This explains why she remembers him in the beginning of season 1. Not giving up, Kurumi leads Shido to meet her past self, Eyepatch Kurumi, with the method to alter history. Eyepatch Kurumi is initially skeptical but after communicating with the Kurumi in the present, they reach an agreement. Eyepatch Kurumi sends Shido back in time a few hours, thus giving him a second chance to change history. Shido hides to allow Phantom to give Kotori the power first. Then Shido attempts to persuade Phantom to leave such that the fight with future Origami could be avoided. Phantom mysteriously instantly knows who Shido is and that he came from the future with Kurumi's help. She transforms into a pink-haired girl and refuses to leave as she said she had some tasks to achieve. Future Origami appears and the fight happens again. Just when history seemed doomed to repeat itself, Shido runs to where past Origami is and pushes Origami's parents out of the way and takes the hit instead. He then awakens in his bedroom, unsure if history has been changed. Shido finds the world is different, but nobody really remembers Origami. The girls notice that something is troubling Shido, but only Shido notices the change in the timeline. Natsumi proposes that Kotori and Yoshino cheer Shido up in embarrassing made outfits. Shido then discovers what's different in this new timeline when Kotori mentions an unidentified spirit called Devil, and in footage, Shido recognizes her to be Origami. The next day, Origami reappears as a new transfer student in Shido's class, who has had a complete change of personality. Shido calls Kotori for information and learns Origami was a still a member of the AST until she retired for unknown reasons. At lunch break, Shido talks with Origami and summarizes that her associating with the AST were not so dramatic, Origami believes the guy who saved her parents and died could have been Shido's brother and her parents gave her so much happiness but ironically still died due to a car accident four years ago. Shido feels tired and sleeps on the rooftop. Kurumi later wakes him up and reveals she remembers everything from the old timeline. When Origami discovers the both of them together, she suddenly transforms into her inverse spirit form and attacks. She goes back to normal after Kurumi retreats but does not recall what just happened. Shido illuminates how he and Kurumi are the only ones who retain knowledge of the previous timeline. Rain analyzed footage from Origami's inverse form and theorizes that despite the alteration of space-time continuum Origami possesses both personas of her current and old self which the latter acts as a self-defense mechanism whenever she comes across a spirit. He'd already pre-scheduled the usual plan to have Origami fall for Shido and seal her powers. The two develop genuine moods on their date although Shido refuses to oblige to Raditoskra's three-way choice, wanting to advance Origami's previous aspects that catches her attention. Later, when Shido rescued Origami from falling off the cliff edge, she notices Afrit's flame healing Shido's wound and transforms into Devil. Toka and the spirit team sense the dreadful danger and intercept the Devil's Satan with Fraxinus shoot down. Within Origami's subconscious she comes into conflict with her old self, Shido breaks through and grabs her hand. Even though Origami didn't have real affections for Shido before, he tells her since five years ago that she no longer has to carry her burdens alone and he kisses her, reverting Origami to her true astral dress. Kotori and the Fraxinus crew have survived. Shido is at school while Origami and Toka resume to what they usually do in the old timeline with a change. Fight for Shido's affection while smiling at the end with her long hair cut back down to short hair again. Shido is exhibiting unusual strength and speed. After careful analysis, Rain asserts that the link between Shido and all spirits he has imprinted are merging into an unstable circulation causing overheat his body with absurd powers. To deal with this problem, the spirits have to kiss Shido to make the link flow inside him secure before midnight. But before they could, Shido destroy and walks out of the infirmary. Shido ignites Yoshino and Miku's powers on the townspeople, includes kissing Ellen for his amusement. Everyone catches up to him and Shido declares that he will only cooperate if they can make him fall for them. A competition is held in a manner, with the girls dress in swimsuits to charm Shido. Although Origami suggests nudity, they change the idea to simply strip in order to seduce Shido. Kanazuki begins to take things too far so Fraxinus shuts off communication. However, Shido collapses and develops abnormal spirits signs and a spatial quake is about to emerge from him that could be more disastrous than previous one 30 years ago. The spirit team race against time, except Kotori who had prepared a weapon for this occasion, but Origami and Toka stops her. Kurumi lends a hand, as the girls take turns in kissing Shido. Both Toka and Shido's sandalphon clash, a defenseless Toka walks up and comes to the realization of love and kisses him. His body and personality is cured, while Shido and Toka share a moment alone. Kurumi Tokasaki attacks a DM facility and finds the captured spirit Nia Hanju, code named Sister. Sometime after the most recent events, Shido has been receiving medical checkups from Rain to confirm his health after having to seal the spirit's magical energy in his body for an extended period of time. While Manataka Mia gets her own checkup from Kotori, Shido returns home when he runs into Nia starving on the streets. He brings her to her workplace, a manga publishing bullpen, where Nia reveals herself both as a spirit and as a manga artist. She is already aware of Shido's mission thanks to her angel, Raziel, which gives her almost unlimited knowledge on the world and humanity. For her own amusement, Nia decides to go 
on a date with Shido until she reveals that she has never fallen in love with anything other than characters from fiction. Shido's attempts to win Nia's heart, both by acting like her favorite manga character and communicating with her through a video game demo, Bale, which gives Ratatoskr the idea of entering a manga festival and submitting their own amateur manga. If they win, Nia will be forced to read it. While the spirits work hard at creating the manga, Shido and Kotori visit an old friend of Nia, whom Nia stopped getting into contact, leading her to believe Nia did not like her anymore. This causes Kotori to believe that Raziel made Nia aware of people's hidden dark thoughts, though, Shido believes Nia wouldn't do that and can overcome this problem with the help of the spirits. Meanwhile, Kurumi visits Nia and asks her if there is a way to destroy the spirit of origin, the spirit responsible for the creation of all spirits. Nia tells her that the spirit of origin is so powerful that defeating her in straight-up combat is impossible, but Kurumi believes she can get around that with time travel. Natsumi does the lion's share of the manga's work and passes out from exhaustion, but the spirits complete their preparations for the festival. The Kamiko festival begins with the spirits and Nia setting up their own booths in order to sell their manga. The spirits ask their friends and colleagues for help in their sales, while Nia gets a surprise visit from her old friend, Takajo, who despite not understanding why Nia stopped being friends with her, still wants to support her work. As the competition heats up, Nia admits that she feels unable to trust people on a personal level because Raziel constantly tempts her to look into people's secrets and violate their privacy, but Shido says that, no matter what happens, he will always trust her. As the festival ends, the competition ends in a draw, but Nia agrees to read the spirit's manga, an embellished retelling of how Shido saved them, which touches her emotionally. Suddenly, Nia starts to inverse due to the memories and trauma of being captured and tortured by D.E.M., purposefully re-triggered by Isaac Westcott. With Raziel turned into the demon king Beelzebub, the spirits attempt to calm Nia down until Ellen and Westcott's new wizard, Artemisia Bell Ashcroft, steal Nia's Cliffa Crystal, the source of her power as an inverted spirit. Westcott himself assimilates the Cliffa Crystal and obtains the power of Beelzebub, ordering a retreat so he can fully assimilate to its power. Fortunately, a fragment of Nia's Sapphira Crystal still remains within her body, so Shido is able to seal her powers. On the path to recovery, Nia plans to reconnect with Takajo and reveals to the other spirits that spirits are all actually former human beings, even the supposed pure ones. An asteroid falls right into Shido's school in the middle of class and Ratatoskr reveals this to be caused by a spacebound spirit fending off attacks by DM forces. Using a camera to project himself into outer space, Shido attempts to talk to the spirit, Mokoro Hashimiya. Mokoro's angel, Michael, can move objects across long distances as well as lock and unlock physical skills and memories of objects and people. Mokoro used Michael on herself to seal her emotions, becoming a person of cold, dispassionate logic. Shido's attempts to persuade her to come to Earth with him fail, as she believes that the spirit's reduced power will not protect them from anyone who would wish harm on them, like DEM. She also threatens to stop the Earth's rotation should anyone interrupt her solitude again, Shido included. Between the threat of DEM successfully capturing Mukuro and Earth's destruction, Kotori tells Shido Ratatoskr will travel into space with its new spaceship, the Fraxinus Excelsior, in order to save Mukuro. Before liftoff however, the spirits receive a visit from Elliot Baldwin Woodman, chairman and founder of Ratatoskr. He reveals that he, alongside Westcott, Ellen, and her sister Karen, founded DEM in an attempt to capture spirits, but upon realizing the immorality of their actions and falling in love with the spirit of origin, Woodman parted ways with Westcott and founded Ratatoskr alongside Karen. As soon as Woodman thanks Shido for keeping the spirits safe, Westcott finds the spirits through the power of Beelzebub, trapping them in a dark void while he goes to confront Woodman. Using the power of Beelzebub, Westcott has trapped the spirits in a world with elements of classical fairy tales and modern manga, forcing the spirits to play the parts of fictional characters. Shido manages to reunite with the spirits, who realize they are unable to escape from the fantasy world under their own power. Instead, the spirits must find a character powerful enough to help them return to the real world. Fortunately, an alternate version of Shido, the protagonist of the manga created by the spirits for Kamiko, comes to their aid and helps them return to their world, but not before telling his original self to save Mukuro and help her come to terms with her own emotions. As the spirits return to the real world, the Fraxinus crew has successfully repelled an attack from DM's forces and the Fraxinus finally blasts off into space. Woodman faces off against Westcott while the Fraxinus catches up to Mukuro in space. Thanks to the Fraxinus' improved and expanded territory, Shido and the spirits can perform a spacewalk without the need of spacesuits in order to talk to Mukuro directly. Unfortunately, the DM fleet, led by Ellen, attacks Fraxinus while Shido uses Haniel to create his own copy of Michael, hoping to use it to unlock the emotions Mukuro sealed away. Maria, Fraxinus AI, grants Origami the Brunhild combat armor so she can fight Artemisia, who is present in the fight, as well. Origami proceeds to merge Brunhild with her own spirit power, just as the spirits grant a portion of their power to Fraxinus in order to deal severe damage to Goetia, Ellen's personal warship, and force it into a retreat. Shido successfully unlocks Mukuro's emotions, but they are attacked by DEM's remaining ships, forcing Shido to protect Mukuro with his own body during atmospheric re-entry. Fraxinus recovers Shido, but Mukuro is nowhere to be found until she teleports at Fraxinus Medical Bay 
and with her emotions unlocked, happily agrees to go on a date with Shido. Meanwhile, Ellen returns to Westcott's side, finding him injured after his fight with Woodman. Shido's date with Mokuro proceeds without problems, but when Mokuro says that she wants to keep Shido all to herself, Shido reaffirms that his duty is to save all the spirits, not just Mokuro. The next day, Shido awakens to realize that everyone he has ever met, including the spirits, has no idea of who he is. Mokuro reveals herself to be responsible for erasing people's memories of Shido because she wants Shido to belong to her. Unexpectedly, however, two people still remember Shido, the new origami, born after Shido created a new timeline, and Toka's inverted personality, awakened during the battle at DM Industries. Inverted Toka wants revenge on Shido for supposedly humiliating her during their first encounter and is about to fight Mukuro, but Origami, acting as peacemaker, decides that the best way to end this conflict is with a date. Unfortunately, the attempts of both inverted Toka and Mukuro to seduce Shido only make him uncomfortable. Kotori and the Ratatoska crew, having not yet fully regained their memories yet, monitor Shido's date with both inverted Toka and Mukuro and send the spirits to find them. Origami suggests they visit the Tengu Tower, a place Mukuro once visited with her foster family. This causes Mukuro to feel momentarily sick and inverted Toka uses this as an opportunity to attempt to kiss Shido, which enrages Mukuro and triggers a battle between them. During the battle, inverted Toka cuts a lock from Mukuro's hair, which further enrages Mukuro and causes her to use Michael in an attempt to stop the planet's rotation, thinking that she and Shido live forever in space. Origami once again combines the Brunhild armor and her spirit powers to fight inverted Toka, while Shido convinces the spirits to save the planet. Mukuro suddenly remembers that, when she first obtained her spirit powers, she used them to make everyone forget her foster sister Asahi existed, including her friends and teacher, an act that caused her family to fear and reject Mukuro. Horrified by what she has done, Mukuro almost inverts, but Shido comforts her and says that he will be her new family. Shido seals her powers, the spirits are able to save the planet, and inverted Toka allows Shido to kiss her, with regular Toka returning, as she and everyone else recovers their memories of Shido. A few days later, Shido and the spirits return to Raisin, only to find Kurumi waiting for them. Kurumi has decided to give Shido a chance to seal her own powers if he can make her fall in love with him first. If she makes him fall for her first, she will take his powers, which would kill him. Shido agrees, because he wants Kurumi to have a normal, happy life, despite the problems she has given him in the past. Meanwhile, Westcott orders Ellen and Artemisia to kill Shido, even creating an army of artificial spirits, called Nibelkohl, to help them. As soon as DEM is about to attack Shido, however, they are intercepted by Mana, who reluctantly receives help from Kurumi's clones and succeeds in forcing DEM to retreat. As the spirits talk about Kurumi's reappearance and DEM's attack, Nia reveals that Kurumi had visited her before the Kamiko festival and asked for information on how to kill the spirit of origin, who appeared 30 years ago. The next day, Shido and Kurumi begin their date, in which Shido takes Kurumi to play with some cats. Shido and Kurumi share their lunches with one another at Raisin, while the other spirits prepare for the upcoming Valentine's Day. That night, Shido is unexpectedly attacked by the Nibelkohl clones in his house, but awakens to find himself like nothing happened. After the spirits' initial attempts to seduce Shido, they proceed to make chocolates, though most are inexperienced and rely on Rain's help. During their conversations, Rain talks about the story of her first love from long ago. Kurumi then arrives in the household, intending to make her own chocolates, as the spirits reluctantly agree to let her join them in making them. Valentine's Day arrives and the spirits give their chocolate gifts to Shido, who goes on another date with Kurumi. Upon nightfall, Kurumi decides to tell her full story to Shido and takes him to an abandoned building she has been using as a safe house, where she uses her angel to transfer her memories to Shido. Years ago, Kurumi was just a normal person who suddenly stumbled upon Mio Takamiya, the spirit of origin. Mio acknowledges that Kurumi had the ability to enter the realm of the spirits, so she gave her a Sapphira crystal, turning Kurumi into a spirit herself and tasked her with hunting monsters across the city. Kurumi killed the monsters as Mio had told her to, but she later discovered that one of the monsters she killed was her friend, Sawa, who had received a Sapphira crystal from Mio, revealing that all the monsters she had been hunting were actually humans mutated by the unstable powers of the Sapphira crystals. All this time, Mio had been using humans in an attempt to refine Sapphira crystals so that she could bond them to humans that could properly use their powers, like Kurumi herself. Upon watching the end of Kurumi's memories, Shido finally understands Kurumi's mission. She wants to avenge Sawa's death. Kurumi admits to Shido that she feels she doesn't deserve redemption for what she has done in her quest to kill the spirit of origin, but she promises that her actions will be undone if her plans succeed, intending to use Shido's power to let her travel back in time to before Mio made her a spirit and kill her then. But a group of Nibelkohl clones attack them. Kurumi kills the Nibelkohls, but collapses from exhaustion. A duplicate of Kurumi from an alternate timeline reaches the safe house and admits to Shido that Kurumi has been using time travel to protect Shido from DEM's constant attacks, as DEM has already succeeded in killing him 204 times, with her undoing it each time. When Shido asks why Kurumi simply didn't kill him and take his powers for herself instead of going through all that trouble just to save him, Kurumi admits that she has fallen in love with him. Once the original Kurumi awakens from her rest, she and
and her clones re-evaluate their plans until they stumble upon Phantom, the mysterious entity that has been creating spirits throughout the years. The Kurumis attack and successfully expose Phantom, revealing herself to be Rain, before taking her into their realm. Shido returns to Ratatoskr's headquarters and informs the spirits about Kurumi's actions and his intentions to save her. All the while another Rain is there assisting them. The overarching moral centers around personal growth, sacrifice, and the complexities of making difficult choices for the greater good. It emphasizes the idea that sometimes, in order to protect what is important, individuals might need to make sacrifices and face challenges that test their values and convictions. The season underscores the importance of courage, selflessness, and the willingness to confront one's past and fears to create a better future. It teaches that growth often comes from facing adversity head-on and making choices that align with one's principles, even if they come with personal sacrifices. Thank you for watching, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, because it is very important for the development of the channel.